that Why was do you important. think he had that consciousness? Well, this is a southern man, yeah. a white southern man. Yeah. Why do you think he had that consciousness? Well, I think one has to remember about white people in general, that there are a lot of them who got that same consciousness as we do. And there are a lot of them in the South, and some say that many more in the South because they see the closeness of it. When my late mo uh, mom was at the Mayor's Committee on Unity, she worked for the first head when she was the deputy director with a white Texan named Dan Dodson, who was certainly as committed as Edith Alexander was. Uh, in this case, it was Lyndon Johnson who actually came and worked with people, uh, in that case, um, Mexican-Americans, Chicanos, uh, and saw their plight and felt it and wanted to do something about it. And I'm reading now a, a book, LBJ, that uh, starts to talk about, um, early in it, but it starts to talk about that was his ambition as a late teenager, to help people. But if you're going to help people, uh, it better be all people. And his was not, not the concern of just doing a little something now and then. His concern was to be doing a little something all the time. And he said, um, when we first um, uh, actually get off on this a little, but when Thurgood Marshall was placed on the court, uh, Thurgood was in the Rose Garden, and he called me into the office, and I had one of the great political lessons for about a half hour before then. Mm -hmm. But he then called up the heads of the Senate committees and said Thurgood Marshall was Solicitor General and Thurgood Marshall had 32 cases and Thurgood Marshall won 31 cases. Therefore, you should support him and hung up if they were going to vote against him. And he did that. Then he called a couple of members of the civil rights community. Then he called Hubert Humphrey and told him. Well, then he um, brought in um, Thurgood Marshall. And uh, he railed on me, he said, you know, Thurgood is uh, like me. He's a man, he's not, he's not you, Cliff, went to Harvard. You know, he's got to, always got to throw the dig in whenever he gets a shot. <laughs> but uh, the point to him was that he saw in Thurgood a person like himself who would be interested in helping people like himself. I and see. I think this was continuous. Not the background. Yeah, More yeah. Of a grassroots yes, kind yeah. of person. And it wasn't true of Thurgood. Yes. Thurgood was upper middle class and, yes. you know, his folks were that way too. But at least he had this sophistry. Uh, Thurgood taught whatever street was at the time. He could, <laughs> he could yes. handle that. And he yes. was a character and he was a, a, a larger than life human being, which was, was joyous for, for many people around him. Yes. But I think the basic point that Lyndon Johnson was making and continued to make was that uh, you have to think about everybody from every kind of setting, and if you can identify, and it really doesn't matter where you're from, but if you can identify with those issues, then you can do something. And that's what he did. He identified and he said, and he saw, unlike any other president that I have seen, he saw his place in history from doing that. I and see. he also said that about appointing Thurgood. That was the main point of my story. The, the, he said that I'm not doing this because it's going to get me more votes, and he didn't run after that. I'm doing this because it's right, and it's what we ought to do. I mean, yeah. you get so much now in politics where people – you know, they're doing this, putting their finger to the wind and trying to figure out what it is that they're going to get out of that rather than what it is that they are doing that may indeed help a group of people or help this country be a better place. The and integrity. The integrity was and there. respect for people. Yeah, yeah. 